All right. I don't have a lot of time. Uh, this is a, a different presentation. It was great. What we just heard, excellent. Uh, this is very different, but that's the nice thing about open source, right? We have a chance to, to talk about so many different things in, in open source. So uh, what I'm going to talk to you in the next few minutes, and I think I only have about 15 minutes, is um, what are people doing, but going beyond people, what are organizations doing in terms of open source software? And this is based on a survey that we do every year. Uh, I work for uh, Perfor Software, uh, specifically for one of the brands, Open Logic, and every year we do a global survey around the use of open source software in organizations. Every single question is about the use of different open source technologies or different topics within open source in organizations. And that's what makes it different to some of the other uh, reports that are out there and of course all the reports that uh, the Linux Foundation research publishes. Um, so I'm gonna tell you about that really quick and uh, I'm gonna show you a few uh, QR codes, so you can take the picture to get read more about that since I don't have a lot of time. Slides are also uploaded on, uh, uh, on, the, on the schedule here for, for the event. So of course, uh, AI generated nice image of beautiful Seattle. That's what I'm gonna use just for a super quick introductions. Um, been in open source for many years for, for different companies like IBM, which see a co co former colleague here, uh, re ah, there's Jeff, uh, and uh, Red Hat and, and a few others. Uh, my role is uh, evangelist, uh, advocating and, and being evangelist for all things open source. And I also run product management for the, the open logic offering. Um, so here's the, the information about the survey. And uh, we collaborated, uh, we invited uh, OSI, this is actually the third year that OSI uh, collaborates with us for this big survey. And this year we also added the Clips Foundation. I was doing a similar talk last year on, uh, on Open Source Summit Europe in, in Bilbao. And I was doing a similar presentation for, for last year's results. And one thing I said was, everyone is welcome here. Like if you or your organization would like to participate, this is completely vendor agnostic. It's all about uh, open sourcing organizations. And someone from, from the audience came to me after the after the talk and say, well, uh, I'm part of the Eclipse Foundation. We'd love to collaborate with you, right? So that was great. And, you know, having someone like OSI or the Eclipse Foundation, obviously that gave us a much larger audience. We had more than 2000 respondents to the survey. And it was not an easy survey, a couple of minutes. It was more than 10 minutes of your time to kind of go and fill the, the, the survey. And we still had more than 2000 uh, respondents. You could see, really global, and we used to have a lot more from North America, a lot more respondents, pretty more distributed now. And if you can read at the bottom there, also in terms of the organizations. Again, every question was about the use of open source in organizations, so pretty well distributed between you know the very large enterprises and the small, mid-sized organizations. So we start, and we've been doing this for the last three years, we start with a question, uh, has your organization increased the use of open source software in the last year? And you can see colors don't help here, but yes and yes significantly increase the use of open source. That's, it was about 65%. In we, if we add the, the respondents that said, you know, we maintain the same amount of use of open source, that's 95%. Like really a small percentage there, about 5% that they said that they reduced the use of open source. And when we dig into the data, we found out that it's not that they stop using open source software, but they might stop using some end of life open source, for example, CentOS, right? Or AngularJS or, or some of the other uh, projects that went end of life. The project, not, not just a version. So why organizations use open source? And again, asking just about the organizations. A surprise for this year uh, was, uh, by the way, the survey was just for about five to six weeks uh, between October and November 2023. Uh, so not a lot of time, right? We could have gone you know, 3,000 respondents or 5,000 respondents. New to this year was the, the uh, cost reduction. In Europe, every year we had number one reason cost reduction, but in North America, we always had, or the last two, three years, we got 
uh, access to innovation, access to the latest technologies. Well, the only explanation for me is, well, you know, things are changing, right? And, and there have been layoffs in large organizations and there's been some, uh, you know, wars in the world and, and things like that that, you know, maybe, maybe had that slow down the, the, the going and access new organizations and say, well, we need to cost Scott, let's, let's go and try some of the, the open source projects. But you can see the other ones. Like, I think there's no surprises there, right? Development velocity and, you know, stable, robust projects, that's a key thing, right? Projects that have a long term. So as a company, I'm gonna use a project that is backed by a large community that is active, that is releasing all the time. If it belongs to a, a foundation like the Linux Foundation, even better, right? Because you know that there's a commitment by the community to have a long term support, new releases for those projects. So definitely that, that makes a, a different difference and you can read some of the some of the some of the other points there. We ask what's the most business critical open source software in your organization? And we didn't provide any options, so people had to type, had to write the, their answer, and these are the top twelve. Not surprising here, and also the major foundations are represented, right? The Linux Foundation, the Apache Software Foundation, and the Eclipse Foundation. Uh, and asterisk there on Jakarta. I put Jakarta because people say Java. Um, and then when I was gonna use the logo for Java, I think there's still some uh, Oracle copyrights there. So I said, no, I'll just Java. <laughs> that's open source. Oh, I'm just Jakarta. That's, that's open source. Um, in terms of the challenges, and, and this is interesting, right? We specifically ask, what are your support challenges uh, with open source software in your organization? And number one, it, it's, it's always been security, but security is something funny or interesting, not funny, interesting. When you ask any, in any type of survey and you grip security as an option, it's always number one, right? They might not do anything around security, but that's important, right? So I was, uh, I didn't want to use, I didn't want to use the, the, I didn't want to use the, the, the option of security. So we had to narrow it down, right? And we said maintaining security, uh, security policies and, and compliance, and it still is number one, right? Which is good. It's a good thing, right? Um, in terms of percentages, it's not that great. Uh, it's just over 50% of organizations actually doing. That's hard to believe for some of us, right? But only about 50% of organizations doing regularly scans and having security compliance. So that's interesting. Number two, it's actually might be new for many of you, which is you're maintaining end of life versions, right? I know it's not that easy to go just go and upgrade to the latest version because you might have some mission critical applications, business critical applications. Uh, so that's, that's a support challenge, which combines with the good thing about open source, especially those projects that are actively releasing and releasing and releasing, right? Which is a good thing, right? Improvements, bug fixes, fixes to, to vulnerabilities, uh, but that's also, that's a support challenge. And, and of, which is up, keeping up with updates and, and patches number number three. I put the logos there just to see if, just, just your, for your curiosity, if, you, if your organizations are doing, or at, uh, uh, doing some of those those compliance. If not, that would be a, a recommendation to take a look and see if uh, you can do some of that. Um, when we talk about compliance, uh, it's very clear that that's two separate things, right? One is what your IT organizations is asking you to do or some of your their policies, we'll call that the internal compliance. And then some of the regulatory compliances, the logos that I, just, I was just showing you. Uh, there's, have a blog post with more details about about that so if you want to read a little bit more of that but but it's really that it's not just the scans uh keeping up with the latest patches it, you know it, making sure that you are you don't have open source soft, uh, end of life software in your deployments in your environments um, you know that that that's that's important some of the some of the compliances some of the policies will be also to make sure that you have support for all your software. And you say, well, it's open source software. Well, that, that's a policy, right? And you may, maybe you can change that, but in some cases you have to have, just have to make sure that, that you are covered or that you have the skills and the proficiency to address some of those open source technologies, especially if it's around infrastructure. And I'll show you the stats about infrastructure in just a second. 
Um, I still have about seven minutes, right? Okay. Um, interesting around uh, the use of open source in organizations. Uh, you're going to see some of the sessions by the to do group, which refers mostly around open source program offices. And they, uh, we use that as a reference, the level of, or some of the activities that kind of represent the level of maturity in the use of open source in organizations. You know, how strategic is open source in organizations? And, and then we ask, you know, provide all the options and we ask uh, people, you know, how's that happening in the organizations? Of course, you know, doing the, the security and the compliance on the top of that, but then you can read through the chart and there are others that they are clearly have room for improvement, right? I, I didn't like to see like inner source projects and having an open source program office way down there with only a few percentages, right? I think there's plenty of room for, for improvement. And sometimes when we are in events like this, you know, where everyone talks about, op, uh, you know, open source program offices and, you know, we have representatives of, from open source program offices doing talks, we don't realize how many other companies are not doing any of that, right? So there's, if, if in your organization you are doing some of that, that's great. Here's good reference. And then you can go to uh, the to-do group and, and some other, um, well, actually, part of, just, just part of the Linux Foundation, there's plenty of resources to help you kind of improve, if not improve, well, yes, improve your practices based on open source and also doing some, some of the inner source and, and so on. Some interesting, just highlighted some interesting uh, uh, information that you saw on, on the blue blocks there or black blocks there. So just really quick, uh, when we ask about the use of the different technologies, how that resulted uh, for, for this year's survey. So in the case of Linux distributions, we listed the open source Linux distributions. Uh, Ubuntu had a big bump. Uh, some of you heard about the situations with CentOS and Red Hat and access to the source code and all that. Um, yes, Rocky Linux, Alma Linux are uh, increasing the uh, usage, uh, but seems to be uh, that Ubuntu was the most benefited. More people actually migrating or, or going to Ubuntu or, you know, we, we keep seeing the, the growth there. Uh, have a, also the QR code there for an article with more details about, about that. Infrastructure, it's, you know, what, what do you call infrastructure, right? So that was a hard one. Uh, we listed what we will consider maybe web infrastructure and, and others. And here are the, the results. No surprise, Nginx and Apache HTTP at the top. Uh, Nginx, I think, passed uh, uh, Apache HTTP over the last, last year. Good to see the, the Clips Foundation projects there as well, making the top 10. Uh, on the cloud native side, well, I mean, there are so many different open source projects, right? So it's hard to, you know, put a list there and for people to, to select. But th those were interesting, interesting numbers there. Uh, of course, Kubernetes keeps increasing and uh, the use of Kubernetes. And there's a lot of details on the report. I'll, I'll show you at the end uh, the QR codes for you to download the report. But, you know, one of the things is people don't are not going to all cloud native, not going all to all containers and Kubernetes environments. The only reason that is, the only thing that is stopping them is the skills, uh, having the people with the skills, the, the experience, the proficiency on those technologies. That's the only reason everyone wants to kind of move on. It seems to be everyone wants to move in that, that direction. Um, here's for frameworks, and this is across the different programming languages. Um, Spring Boot, uh, you know, VMware, what we're hearing that issues with VMware since their acquisition by Broadcom, I think that has helped. There's also a major version of a Spring Boot uh, reaching end of life. Uh, AngularJS went end of life two years ago and still showing showing there. So some, some interesting numbers there. Programming languages, I think no surprises there. Uh, I think we saw a switch between Java, Script, and, and Python. Java is split on the different runtimes, so maybe Java still in organizations is still the, the number one programming language. Uh, data technologies is interesting, and you you heard on the on the keynote, uh, you know, AWS supporting many of the different open source projects, right? And and you also know about the situation with with uh, with Redis and and uh, HashiCorp and others. This is the area, right, where all these things happening. Uh, some of these also have 
not technically not open source licenses. They're, they're, uh, obviously, there's a huge business, keeps growing, right? The, the, the more AI applications, AI-based applications need the data. So we see a continuous growth and a lot of business opportunity in this. But for me, the highlight is, well, look, look how many options do we have now, right? It's no longer just the two or three relational databases, right? Look how many options that, that we have in, in the space. And this is what op organizations around the world of all sizes are, are using today. Uh, on the DevOps space, uh, no changes really. I mean, maybe it was too early for, for Terraform, but open to food there about 7.8%. <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see next year uh, on uh, CI CD tooling. Um, for some reason, less uh, uh, the previous years we saw the uh, cloud native tooling kind of growing, and for some reason it went down this, this year. Um, and then security tools, this is an interesting one, right? We wanted to tell, uh, know what organizations are using in terms of open source security tooling. Uh, we did the research and we said, well, these are probably the most used ones. We put it on the, on the survey and these are the, the results. Uh, very low numbers, right, in terms of the usage. So uh, there's, there's not enough awareness, I think. I don't think it's that just organizations going for commercial software. I think it's just lack of lack of awareness. And talking to uh, an analyst, uh, uh, she was saying, "Look, yes, companies are going with commercial open uh, commercial security software, but they are also using open source." It's, it's uh, she couldn't believe that the numbers were so low, but you know that's that's the, that's the reality. That's that's one of the lessons learned. And then I listed some others that were mentioned that we didn't have in the in the in the options. Um, so finally, uh, this actually relates to, the, to a little bit to the previous talk, uh, where as an organization you are sponsoring or contributing to, uh, to open source organizations. You could see that the top foundations are there, uh, and then, which good to see, OSI and the Eclipse Foundation, of course, uh, but good to see that individual open source projects, it's, it's up there. Um, different, different percentages from what we just saw in the previous uh, session, but but these are the numbers that, that we receive, as I said, from, from all over the world. Uh, it continues to improve. We've been do, I've been doing this directly for the last three years and continues to, to, to grow. Um, so I'm just gonna end the session showing you a couple of uh, QR codes. One, if you wanna download the, the reports, free download, uh, and then uh, more information about what I just mentioned earlier around the cell situation with CentOS and and Red Hat and Rocky Linux, Alma Linux, and all this this activity. I've been following that very closely, um, and uh, you know, wrote about that, and also done different webinars on on the on the subject. Um, so with that, I think we com I completely ran out of time. But uh, if anyone has a question, shoot. I, I guess we can do one minute of Q and A. Uh, if not, I'll be outside, and, and we can definitely talk. Thank you.